We have here today a mock setup of a stage area that we are wanting to light. We are just going to go with stage left, center stage, and stage right. Firstly, do we always have to do zones? Well, the short answer is no. If your application just simply needs a lights up and lights down scenario, then we are just looking for an even wash. If we are looking at more theatrical, then we may want to consider zoning. Now, a front generic stage wash is easily achieved by simply evenly spacing out the fixtures in a row to cast light on the front of the stage. Easy, right? Well, yes it is. However, we do want to look at fixture placement and choice. We have some lights set up at the back to shine light at the stage. And as you can see, while the stage is lit, yes, but the angle is not ideal. For the performers, the light is pretty much in their eyes, or in my eyes in this case, as you can see. Now, if this is the only choice you have, then at least try to have the light coming from the outside angle so it's not directly in front of the eyes. Uh, deer caught in the headlights might come to mind. Aside from the fact that, as you can see, we are lighting up the screens and we're lighting up the wooden set behind me, and we certainly don't want to be washing that out. If you can, as close to 43 degrees down angle is what we're hoping for, much like the angles we discussed when we talked about lighting a subject in the other tech note. So now we will demonstrate lighting this area with a PAR wash. This could also be similar to lighting a stage with track lighting or any other type of non-controllable fixture where there's no control to shape the beam, such as a Leco or for now with barn doors. Now, yes, of course, we do know that barn doors can also be put on PARs, but I do want to show the overspill you can get from lights that do not have control. So like I was saying, we're lighting the stage with PARs. And as you can see, we're spilling some light up onto the screen. There is some light that's spilling onto the wooden set behind me and, of course, onto this screen behind me as well. Um, as long as we can see this, you can see that there's some light spilling off to the left and right, and there's some light spilling onto the wood in front of me. And that could be correlated to maybe some light spilling onto the audience that you don't want to have, or into the stage left or the stage right area. Um, what we're going to be talking about next is Leco's, where we're going to be able to control this spill. So now we will bring on the front wash with the Leco's. And as you can see, we're able to control the spill of the light much better. If you look at the front here, the light is no longer projecting onto the wooden floor. And if you look to the stage right and to the stage left, we have a nice, even, solid edge. So that way the sides of the stages aren't being lit up. Now the most important thing about using Leco's is because of the shutters, we're able to frame the light underneath this screen. And now we're not washing out the media content that you might want to be putting onto a screen. As well as for lighting, we're able to cut the light underneath the wooden slat. So the green lights projecting onto the wood are nice and clear. They're not being washed out by white light. And of course, the same thing with the screen on the left-hand side. So for my choice, I do prefer to use Leco's for front light. But of course, sometimes budget's an issue, maybe an existing inventory, and you just don't have a choice but to use PARS. But of course, the other thing to consider is maybe you don't have screens that you need to cut around, and maybe you don't have wooden sets that you have to cut around, in which case, just use PARS. It'll be fine. So that's basically the options for style of fixture choice. And remember, the real question to decide upon before making the selection is, how much control do I need?